awesome. Uh, let me know uh, someone if that's if that's not quite large enough, and I will uh, make it so. Cool. Welcome everybody to the eleventh Jenkins UX Sig online meetup. Uh, we got a couple of standard items here, and then some new items to go through today. Uh, so first, agenda review and 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 agree on agenda topics. So anybody have anything they want to add? I see we're just jumping in there and doing that. That's awesome. Feel free to do that as we go through. Um, can you paste the then, link into the SIG channel? Just so sorry. I can find it. Uh, can you just paste the link to the document in the Gitto channel? Oh, it's, it's, it's the, this document, sure. Actually, uh, Felix or Evarista, would you mind doing that real quick? Um, sorry, what? Sorry, what? Uh, can you paste the link to this uh, document oh, in yeah, Gitter? Uh, yeah, all right. All right. I think I'm signed up so easier. Yeah, thank you. Um, cool, and then we always do this as well, introduce any new participants and kind of discuss their interests. So scan through the list here. Um, forgive me if I'm saying your name incorrectly. Sumit, are you there? Hi, I'm here. Uh, you're saying it correctly. So, um, so basically I just uh, wanted to explore uh, how the UX SIG is performing and like, I mean, basically how you, uh, what tasks are you working on and just getting myself familiar, so. Awesome, welcome. Sorry to put you on the spot. Just wanted to say hi and, and uh, thanks for joining. Thank you. Um, and I think uh, with that, we can go ahead and jump into the first item on the list and we got a lot to cover today. So I will try to be uh, timely with this as well. Uh, so we're going to kick off with a quick design deck here, take a look at some items that have uh, been improved and worked upon since the last SIG meeting, week before last. Um, for context, for, for those of you seeing this for the first time, or maybe the first time in a while, um, each, de each, week, each SIG meeting, uh, we have a deck like this that kind of summarizes some of the design items. And we also have a dedicated resources uh, Google document that lists everything that we share in, in every meeting. So everything's kind of collated and you can reference back to this, but to get some more context for the overall project, there's some slides in here that are here for every deck if you want to check those out. Um, and then we can jump into some, there were three items on today's list, typography considerations, color palette improvements, and some sidebar design improvements. So first let's look at typography. We had, um, as of, I think it was probably February, uh, in this SIG, we shared uh, the first iteration of um, a sort of type scale, um, sort of trying to define um, consistent or, or standardized uh, typographic hierarchy for the Jenkins interface, um, which we have since simplified. And we've, of course, uh, merged some really simple but really effective and, and impactful improvements to typography in Jenkins as well, which is great. Um, so all this topic is for, for today's call is just to say that work kind of continues, right? It's not, it's not just a checkbox and then done and, and we don't think about typography. It's one of those elements that, um, that impacts just about everything else in the experience. So in the background, or I suppose not in the background, but over here in between meetings, uh, things are things are happening here as well. So I spent a little time thinking about typography in Jenkins, uh, trying to come up with a, a, a more effective way of categorizing uh, typography um, and typographic styles. And of course, we had previously decided to to lean upon system default fonts for rendering type in Jenkins interfaces. Uh, and as a result, uh, one of the the tasks I wanted to accomplish over here in my design software was set up all of the type styles that we have going in the three most common system default fonts, um, which are San Francisco, Segui, and Ubuntu. And uh, in that way, whenever a new component is being designed, uh, I can easily swap between those three fonts and get a better understanding of what that component or that element looks like for users of different, different operating systems. Um, so that's not something really I can, I can show very quickly without a more prepared demo, um, but it's just to kind of highlight that that's something we're being mindful of. Um, this is the type scale in, the, in its current iteration, right? This is something that will continue to evolve, 
but fortunately it is it is becoming more sophisticated as we solve as we continue to solve problems uh, and it's it's becoming a bit more realistic as time goes on as well and as I mentioned you, know, you can always go back and look at this stuff after the fact so I'm going to kind of move quickly because we've got a lot to cover the second topic also I'm just broadcasting here which I apologize anyone can interrupt me anytime uh, as a reminder, we have an open conversation format here. Um, the second topic is updated color palettes. Uh, Uli, you brought to my attention the need for, for more detail around, around colors in the last SIG meeting, which I really appreciate. Um, we had that first iteration of a color palette. It was okay and it got things started and now it was time to push that further. I don't yet have a color schema for you for data visualization. I know that's something you were kind of wanting and I will be giving that to you soon. Um, but first I wanted to improve the format of this. I'm sorry, were you gonna say something? Oh, oh okay, I thought I, missed, I thought I heard something. Um, and so I wanted to take a step back and, and improve how we do, how, how we uh, look at colors in Jenkins and also um, provide some more detailed resources around colors. So with that in mind, We've got some color categories here. Each category contains multiple swatches. And what this does is it helps us to kind of establish a framework, a framework for discussing color and how we think about the different colors relate to one another throughout the interface. Um, each swatch, this is not a full palette, of course, this is just a few swatches, but each swatch now provides the, the hex value for reference, right? Um, which is a, an oversight from the original version, but now that's added in there. And uh, the updated resource also emphasizes visual contrast. Uh, so details are provided about the contrast ratio of common color pairings, right? So it's really important uh, when you're referencing these colors to, oh, I'm sorry, somebody said something. No, sorry. Oh, no worries. I keep hearing things, sorry. Too much coffee, perhaps. Um, it's really important to think about uh, how, how these colors relate to one another and the contrast that we have, especially when it comes to text, but also just general UI elements against their backgrounds. Um, so what I've done for each color here is provided the contrast ratio details um, for, for common color scenarios, right? So for example, we have Jenkins blue here. If this is used as a background and the foreground is text white, then this contrast ratio is too low. This fails by most measures. Um, but the temptation and, and the inclination usually would be to put white text on this blue. So that's why that particular pairing is, is uh, laid out here um, to provide that detail. And the goal is to show those common color pairings, what people would, would typically uh, default to logically and myself included. And, and provide a little more context for whether or not that works um, inside of these resources. Joe, as a complete inexpert, so would you then use white te black text over that deep over that Jenkins blue color? I'm not sure. So How great question. Um, so in in this case, when we see that the contrast ratio is, and, and this resource I should point out needs a little more work, right? Like this says that this fails, but it doesn't help you figure out what to do instead. Um, the answer to that question though is that this this blue really shouldn't be used as a backdrop to for text. text. Correct. Thank you. Okay, thanks. So so that's the hint to me. If it's Jenkins blue behind it as a as a person placing text over that, it's going to be very, very difficult for it to be visible to the user, no matter what color of text I use. Got Correct. It. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. And, and like I said, you know, the resource, I'm still working on it here. And basically I want to make it real easy and I'll link some other tools for people to go and test out other combinations. You know, like, like if you were wondering what if black would work. Um, so work in progress, but hopefully we, we end up with some really thorough, useful stuff here. And what we're seeing on screen now is um, an example of one of those categories, right? So this is not every, every color that we'll see in Jenkins um, by any means, but what we do have here, we have, uh, as I mentioned earlier, earlier, five color categories. 
and this is the general UI elements color category. We're showing the visual contrast uh, details for common pairings, what people would, would usually be inclined to try out together. And I'll also add on here sort of a link to, to uh, other tooling that helps you test other combinations. Uh, and there'll be one of these sheets for uh, every color category. So anyone have any thoughts or feedback on that? This needs some finessing in my opinion, frankly, but um, anyone got anything there to share or discuss? Okay, cool. Well, I'll keep you all updated. Um, the final form you know, of this or the, the more finesse form, so it's a little easier to understand, I think. Uh, I'll share in the next SIG meeting. And then the last thing for this slide deck, and then Felix uh, will jump into yours, uh, your uh, demo there, will be just that we're thinking about design improvements for the sidebar. And the place to start for that is to kind of try and define the anatomy of that side panel. Um, right now, it's uh, for, for power users and people who are very familiar with Jenkins, it's really clear. Uh, how it works, but it's not always clear to new users. Um, it can be a little bit amorphous uh, what what elements are which and how they how they interact and relate to one another. I think there's a comment here. Let me just check that. <laughs> Thanks, Wale. Um Let me see here. So we're trying to think about um, how, we're try, trying to define a structure, right? Because there, it already exists. That panel has um, has logic to it. It's just not always very intuitive. So this is by no means done. This is something we're thinking about and working on. Um, and this is where that logic stands right now. In an ideal world, you know, some of this is not technically feasible at all yet. But yeah. but having these groupings. Go ahead, I would like to say something. I would like to to call attention to the to the distinction there. Can you zoom in the in the sidebar, please, a bit, uh, in the tasks bit? So uh, we are aware, and many people is aware that there are problems in in the sidebar with the mixing of two different things, families of uh, items, which are navigation links and actions. For example, it's confusing to have go to this configure page next to the delete build button or next to the build now button. So, yeah, so we've, uh, Joe has designed some concept for to separate, how do we can separate tasks than navigation here. I am afraid we cannot implement it right now because we don't, there's just not infrastructure on the Jenkins, I mean, on Jelly or whatever to do to do this, but this is something that we propose. And if something, if somebody comes up with a way of how we can start walk, walking the way towards this, uh, please uh, speak up, um, or we work on the initiative. I mean, yeah, yeah for sure. I would be happy to improve this panel because uh, this is uh, an idealistic state. And in some cases, for example, for a build view, it becomes really complicated because uh, many actions tend to, uh, to add additional controls. Uh, yeah. I'm not even speaking about Git plugin, which may add something like five or 10 actions, uh, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, there is uh, a known issue with that. Uh, so I would be happy to regroup it, uh, to remove it, and maybe even hide uh, the panel uh, by default or maybe put a slider so that uh, it doesn't consume too much space when it's not needed. Yeah, for me, it, the, the, the best thing would be to allow people calling the task or setting up the panel calling or invoking the task to say mm -hmm. this is an action or this is a navigation. So I think mm -hmm. that would be a start for me to, but I don't, I don't know. Maybe we can, maybe we can discuss this offline, but Ideally, we'll have the vision where we could improve. Uh, we can, we, this is something we can improve, and I mostly, um, almost everybody agrees with this. Yeah, you could. Thank you, Joe. So, awesome, for sure. Yeah. We just introduced gonna... a categorization for the configuration screen. So, yeah, if you go forward and in 
traduced it somewhere else, including that panel. Mm -hmm. Plus one. Great. Sweet. I'm going to stop sharing here and, and hand it over to Felix. OK, yeah. Um, let me start. So what I'm going to do is show you, show everybody a bit of what my current implementation of the sidebar is based on these changes. And we will be looking for feedback. OK, um, let me know if everybody can see my screen. Yeah, I can see it. OK, great. Um, so I, I went ahead and implemented Joe's designs. And uh, you'll notice that this sidebar takes a bit more space. Um, we have added a bit more vertical space in between items. They are now, each hyperlink is now 40 pixels tall. We think this is a reasonable touch area for people to interact with because the previous, uh, the previous one felt too cramped. I mean, you you see there, there this is really uh, this is almost close to close to trophobic, right? So uh, problem, it may push these panels a bit in some screens. That's something that we appreciate feedback on this, but we ask to keep an open mind on this one. So you'll see uh, this is how it looks in a screen with a bit more item with a few more items, for example on this job. Um, we also have improved the um, active status for the current page. We think it's a bit more clear now, more visible instead of just bold text. And we also look into the into how to render nested items and nested elements inside of this. So, especially for example, the credentials one, the credentials plugin um, provides some uh, sidebar entries with different levels of nesting. Instead of marking all ancestors as current, I think we this is more this is lighter. Um, but yeah, we I will probably be creating this PR tomorrow morning. So I uh, we ask everybody to please give it a try. And um, yeah, and we await all feedback. This um, is one of those. Oh, sorry, go on. Sorry, no, no, please go ahead. I was just, I was just gonna say this is one of those things that you know on paper it can seem kind of it can almost seem like not not a big deal but really over the long term when you're interacting with this panel as much as a person does this can make a huge difference in just general usability and having um, proper interactive states reflected here um, so pretty excited about this one but definitely open you know open to feedback and want to hear what you all think for sure yeah. Uh, definitely. Also, um, and regarding the implementation of this, this is a bit interesting. I think this can be a bit interesting. We, what I did uh, was, uh, for, first of all, if you if you look at the ci.jenkins.io example, uh, you'll see that these uh, both in each image, these are two different hyperlinks doesn't really make much sense. So what I did is I reworked the task.jelly template to have a single hyperlink to wrap everything. So I think it's a bit more usable. And now when the, when the user taps through this, it's a bit more accessible and a bit more intuitive. So I, I don't think this will break any plugin any plugin, I will try to identify, uh, do a bit more deep search of uh, of plugins that has a custom action that jelly. So if anyone is aware of any plugin that does weird things with sidebar entries, please let me know as soon as possible. <laughs> I appreciate it. Also, another call for help. Uh, if anybody, I know, I, I know that there are plugins, that there are places where the sidebar entries have a arrow a drop down arrow like this one. So if anybody knows of... Just in case you are not sharing the screen. I was a bit doubtful with the CI Jenkins, but now it's clear. You are still sharing the local host. Okay, I don't know why I tapped that. Okay, so now you can see my screen? The local host okay. one only. I think you share only a, a tab or things like that. Oh, oh well. Let me, let me try to 
Jesus shit again. Okay. Um so what I what I wanted to say is that um these both now both the images and the labels are within the same hyperlink unlike before. So I needed to change the task that jelly template for that. So if anybody is aware of any plugin that does weird things with sidebar entries, please let me know. I've been searching. I didn't find any relevant plugins that that did that, but oh, uh, you never know. And also I know I'm aware that I think some plugins have a drop down arrow like this, a contextual menu on the sidebar uh, on the sidebar entries. So I'm looking for sidebar entries with a contextual menu. If somebody uh, knows of a specific one to test, please let me know. So yeah. So that's it. Any any feedback? Any any comments on this? Uh, would it make sense to uh, forbid some things like a drop downs or I think even the hierarchy? I never seen it before. Um, does it really make sense to have a hierarchy in this list on the left side? Sorry, I can agree you with you. <laughs> oh. For, for oh. me, at least, it I find it quite helpful to have credentials have hierarchy there, okay. because it, it at least it it helped me understand there is a a nesting of this. So the example he shows here was was helpful to me. However, I'm open to also opening the credentials panel directly and using it. Yeah, personally, I have never understood why credentials has to be on this page. Pretty much the same for local resources, because of all of it can be accessible from the managed page. In some cases, uh, there was a workaround because um, the managed page requires uh, administrative access to view. But I guess we partially resolved it with system read permission. And maybe we could have another page for such bits uh, so that uh, uh, we don't have to display them at all here on the landing. But that will not solve the problem for credential because credential is not linked with system read. It's just the credential manage that is a completely separate permission. Yeah, so it will uh, require additional uh, magic about that. But from user experience standpoint, if we can uh, remove it uh, from this panel entirely, I think it would be better because uh, these items are not uh, accessed often. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure I have never accessed them from these pages. No, no, I feel the same, at least from my personal experience, that that hierarchy seems weird, but yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Just concerning the one link instead of two, it's something that is really nice. So if you can manage to have that in implemented, uh, it could be really good, especially in terms of accessibility. Yeah, uh, that's something I want to touch uh, right after this, but yeah, that was one of the goals. And does the, with the switch, does the alt text still survive so that those with visual visual impairments will be able to see the alt text that helps them it doesn't switch to not showing alt text i assume so thing is if if you have the the hyperlink and the label if you have the image and the label inside the same hyperlink you can just have no alt text for the image because the hyperlink text should be meaningful enough before it was a hack because um, it was needed because the hyperlink, uh, sorry, the image was a hyperlink that had no 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 text. So you could hover over it and say, okay, what does this icon do? But now they are by, part of the same entity. So uh, a screen reader, whatever tool, just would go over and read the content of the text. For example, they would go over here and read manage Jenkins and ignore the, the icon. Excellent. So, so an improvement in accessibility. Thank you. Yeah. Just a thought about the CI Jenkins.io, if you can just open a tab to come back there. Uh, as you have seen, perhaps there is a lot, lot number of uh, executor. You can scroll down a lot to see all the things with 
an extended height for the sidebar, do you think it could be a problem with that? Especially if we think about the future and your tendency to put more space around the things for the design, such page could be even longer. What do you think? Um, so it, it, it's a balancing act, right? Um, it's it's a because it is a fundamentally good thing to have slightly, maybe not not maybe not even as much as we have reflected there, but but it is a good thing to have a more spaced out menu. However, I totally get your point. The design of these executors and how this is reflected is also going to be reconsidered. So we might be able to, for lack of a better expression, save some height, some vertical height in those as well. It's hard to say right now, but at the end of the day, if if someone has a really complex configuration with a very tall sidebar, um, there there's sort of a, a feeling out there that um, that people don't like to scroll or that that breaks the experience. And, uh, from what I understand, you know, that's that's not necessarily true. So it's something I'm being mindful of for sure. Uh, but I think it's also somewhat unavoidable right. in this project. Yeah, I, I also think um, it could be argued that is that a correct place, you know, to have the executors, where to place the executors list. So, for example, can you can we be creative? Can we maybe have a, a right panel where we share that it's collapsible, where we can show the, all these items? So, and we keep the left panel purely for navigation. So, I think that uh, that opens that can open a, and can lead to a bigger discussions of whether the panels should actually exist. Uh, continue to exist in the same shape that they uh, do right now? Yeah, it's a good question because it's not only a matter of user experience, it's also a matter of performance because on big instances, uh, this panel uh, creates a pretty high load on the server. Uh, it was even worse when this uh, panel was synchronous, when uh, we had queue logs, etc. Now we have uh, queue caching because some eventual consistency on this panel. Uh, but still it uh, produces quite a load if you have hundreds of uh, users connecting to the main page. Yeah. So, I, yeah. I really like the idea of the right sidebar collapsible with the executors. I was thinking of a very similar idea to what you just said, Felix. I think that could be a, something to think about. Yeah. I, th I think that, I think that's, I think that's. Uh, I think we should kick down the future because, for example, I also have been playing around with the idea of making uh, so everybody's favorite panel, which is the trends. That uh, we all know what happens when when this gets too wide, right? Uh, I've been playing around with the idea of making this collapsible to the to the side. So maybe we we should be start thinking about that. But I think that I think Radek. I think um, you're you're right. We are we are on a track to add vertical spacing to many places. But for example, here, maybe here in the build history, that argument has more impact uh, because this is something you can see at a glance. But for example, here, on as soon as you have something on the build queue, you just will not see anything on the executors list, right? So. I, I, as you said, I think it's a balancing act, and I don't think we have a good solution right now, other than because we we need to see to what extent we should limit ourselves, improving readability, improving uh, in, uh, ability, uh, capacity to interact with this panel and to improve it, with balancing with the fact that we have this piece of legacy UI widget. Just a thought in addition, if you want to break no workflow of people to have like Gmail a condensed mod, it could be also useful so that you remove the vertical space for people who really want to have very dense information and for rest of the people to have the more beautiful version. What do you think? I mean, it's, that, it's an interesting idea. Um, it's a, I, it's just, it's out of scope for right now, but long term, I, I think it's an interesting idea, especially since there are so many um, pieces of the UI in general that look like this. The same, the same kind of goes for the panels, topics, and these ideas. Like, 
um, I love them as ideas, but I don't think we'll, we'll be able to get to them very soon. Um, but it's, it's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I'm writing so, them down. I'm looking at that side panel and it's just like, none of that really needs to be there. Who, who clicks on the people link? Right. Who clicks on my views? Who clicks on new view? And who click yeah. yeah, credentials, lockable resources. Like how often are they actually used in the, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I have talked with some friends that are actual Power Jenkins users uh, unrelated to Cloudis or to the Linux community, they just see admins. And they say for, for them the biggest problem with Jenkins was the what the hell effect about uh, what I, especially for this site navigation. When which should I go here? When should I go to the slash manage page? So but I think that's a far bigger reach than what we can do here in this CSS based improvement. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 that's very true. Um, it's also true that we, we can be mindful of those things for the long term as we're making these style improvements too. So this is still very valuable feedback. So I appreciate it. Yeah. yeah just one small step at a time. Because if you compare current uh, layout with uh, one we had uh, one year ago, you can already see a lot of great improvements. So. Yeah, thank you. Oh, I agree on the, with that. Okay, I think it's uh, we have 25 minutes left. If if we if there are no further comments, maybe we can go ahead and move to the next point. Uh, okay. Um, so next topic is I'm going to. Um, Next topic is okay for uh, for some reason. Uh, uh, introducing accessibility epic. Okay, let me share again this time my Visual Studio Code screen. So we at Cloudwise we had done some. We have been doing some accessibility research and found some accessibility. Well, Jenkins as a whole has uh, severe accessibility issues. Most of them are very, very tough to solve. Uh, for example, uh, it's really difficult to make accessible widgets such as drop downs and everything because they depend on Yahoo UI code. So uh, that said, we identified several issues that can be easy and uh, even most of them newly friendly. And so I will be creating an accessibility epic with these issues. And we will leave them there. And eventually, if we we see no open source contributors, sorry, some community contributors to pick them up and implement them, maybe we, we will be, we at Cloudis will start solving some, a few of them. But we think are great candidates for newly friendly tasks. So for example, some of, the, uh, of these are indicate the language of the page in the HTML document. Uh, uh, fix the skip navigation, skip to content navigation. This should be rather straightforward. Forward. This one does not apply anymore uh, with the navigation changes. And labels uh, some improvement to the, to the login screen and form. Maybe we can use the new buttons on the login buttons. Okay. So, and um, provide a warning before logout. I think this. I think this should be somewhat easier tasks. So I just wanted to introduce them. And anybody see an accessibility problem, an actual accessibility problem, especially if we, if it can be categorized by uh, the web accessibility standard standards uh, with a severity and a source of problem. So yeah, I think that would be the place for this. Any comment on this? Yes, it would be a nice improvement in general. Mm, also, we had a number of contributors who were bringing up uh, accessibility stories before. So, for example, we were discussing the UI mode for colorblind people. Obviously, it's not a newbie friendly task, uh, but the, uh, these uh, tasks uh, and stories definitely make sense. Um, so, my main question is how far we would like to go in general. So not uh, this newbie friendly tasks, but what would be the end goal for us? So 
and goals should be maybe <laughs> making Jenkins legal to use in countries and places where you have, for example, in a government or in a or in a big company, should be able to use Jenkins without fear that somebody, some employee, would sue them for uh, because the the tool the uh, tool they are mandated to use is not accessible. So I think that's the extent we should avoid. And um, I mean. Uh, this is a pragmatic way, and the target should be to serve better most users, but the more pragmatic and cynical is everybody should be should feel should feel safe to use Jenkins as a tool in these cases. Mm. Yeah. yeah, emphasize emphasis on the cynical. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's perfectly fine. Certifications are also important. Um, especially for vendors, but yeah, for many users, it's uh, it may be also a decision criteria. So if we say that we comply with some standards and we have proof of that, it would definitely help. So why I'm I'm asking is mostly about because of the Jenkins roadmap, because accessibility looks uh, to be a good item to put there in general. Yeah, if, uh, if we want to put that, we definitely uh, need to somehow document that this bigger story. Maybe it's an additional project for UX seek uh, for the future or for now, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I would be interested to put something like that on the Jenkins roadmap. Do we have identified a particular tool or a test that we want to pass in order to detect those accessibility issues? I don't, I don't know right now, Ole. Well, I have no idea uh, how to handle web accessibility. Uh, I mean, there are there are lots of of uh, browser extensions that you can install, and we'll do an accessibility a first level accessibility audit of the page. But if you put them in Jenkins, they will just explode. I mean, um, Jenkins has lots of problems. It's mostly about, and the, the best thing we can do as developers is informing us ourselves on what the common accessibility uh, issues are, because it's, um, and try to fix them a bit by a bit, because it, I don't think it's possible or reasonable to say, and we are going to make Jenkins AA accessible in one year. I don't think that's feasible especially considering that Jenkins depends so much on the plugins and plugins can be inaccessible themselves and they would be, may bring maybe the the, accessibility, the the level of accessibility down. Uh, but what can we do? We can create accessible widgets, uh, accessible search bar and search box. We can create accessible dropdowns. We can uh, improve the forms. The forms are a big one, and thankfully, f with the new forms PR, we are on our way to have more accessible forms. So, those are all places where we can help. I'm just keeping an eye on the clock here. I don't want us to miss out on on some other ones, so we might need to move on to the next next yeah, thing there. Um, Jenkins UX Online Hackathon proposal, Mark uh, Oleg. I have the hackathon. If you do, you want to share? I have the hackathon. Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. I can uh, uh, speak about that. So if you don't mind, I will just share my screen. Okay. Yeah. So we haven't uh, really discussed it yet. Uh, uh, with the public, and actually, this is just. A quick heads up, uh, we were discussing um, having a kind of online hackathon for a couple of months. Uh, we discussed it in uh, Brussels at the Jenkins Contributor Summit. Uh, we had um, a number of hackathons before and they were quite successful. So for example, here we have Java 10 hackathon in 2018. It was a one week online hackathon. Then we had Hacktoberfest. Last October 1st, uh, again, was uh, pretty good in terms of contributions we accumulated. Uh, we had more than 100 contributors uh, to the Jenkins project coming through October 1st. Uh, and yeah, we had an interest uh, to run something. And after discussions, we thought that it might be good to actually focus on user experience. 
Why? Because uh, yeah, the Jenkins user experience is one of the biggest issues. And as Felix uh, talked before, there is a lot of various new friendly tickets we could create. So the idea uh, we would like to propose, um, and uh, again, uh, I will reach out to the developer mailing list soon, uh, is having online hackathon for that uh, in late May. Uh, why this time frame is because it's end of uh, JSOC community bonding, so that uh, we don't have a flow up with this uh, JSOC coding time frame, and uh, also um, the students can um, also participate in the community if they are interested. Um, and uh, the, the idea would be to focus on uh, user experience. It includes some stories like Jenkins look and feel updates. So basically, we took stories which are already uh, on the roadmap, which we discussed at the previous meetings. Um, okay, so here you can see there are stories like UI UX uh, look and feel, uh, user interface rework. We didn't touch it, of course, here. Uh, yeah. Plugin management, user experience is also on the list. Uh, I also tentatively added uh, accessibility topic uh, just before this meeting, uh, when I've seen the agenda, because if you have new friendly tickets, why not? Uh, also, um, there we have a number of documentation things we would like to improve. So solution pages, tutorials, is what we were discussing at the documentation seek over past months, because documentation could be improved. And documentation is also a significant factor for user experience overall. We could also put a docs migration. So it's basically migration from Wiki, the story which is still there. Um, and yeah, item which is currently in works, uh, the Jenkins said the way uh, user story site, uh, there is a blog post staged uh, by Alisa Tong. So we were thinking uh, uh, just to get these stories and to run a one week event where we invite everybody to contribute. Um, and as a result, uh, we uh, sent some schwag and in parallel we organized some online events like meetups, for example, developer meetups for web UI development. Uh, also some grant opening like we did for Oktoberfest, for example. And yeah, it's a one week hackathon. So we will need the reviewers, we will need all the social media stuff, and uh, I think that advocacy and outreach seek would be pretty interested to contribute there. Um, yes, that's what we want to organize. Uh, it's all in draft. This document basically just started tomorrow. We just put some uh, brain dump, uh, but uh, it will be sent uh, to the community soon. So. My interest uh, would be to get your feedback, whether you uh, think it's important enough, whether you would be interested to participate and uh, provide your feedback. Mm -hmm. I think it's a super interesting idea. I think that this is, I have not been involved with a hackathon for Jenkins in the past, um, but I know that they are a really great way of building community, of reminding people why they love this project. And and um, so I'm excited about this. I would love to also talk more with you after this after this call, just since we're running out of time, Oleg, about some of the topics that you have in mind, but, um, yeah. but this is very cool. Well, and from my side, mm -hmm. thanks very much for considering docs here as part of user experience. I think that's intensely valuable and we could get a whole bunch of newbie friendly tasks that would go into that bucket excellent so yeah i hope uh, to share this document by the end of the week uh, so yeah. Yeah, again I'm, it's just a preview i'm thinking of getting you any samples back into jenkins core and have actual samples or buttons for example on icons that would be amazing why not? So yeah, of course, it's online hackathon. Yeah. So yeah, everybody is welcome to participate. Uh, yeah, uh, so uh, if you are concerned about timing, uh, Java 10 plus hackathon, basically it was organized with two weeks advance. And we have three weeks. So yeah, I think it's uh, technically possible. Uh, yeah, we will dedicate some time. We also discussed sponsorship. So we want to tie it to Jenkins's The Way campaign. Uh, and hence we will get Jenkins in The Way t-shirts for contributors. And yeah, probably we'll be able to facilitate more schwag. 
These t-shirts are really nice, by the way. <laughs> so, yep, yep. Yeah, more details soon. But yeah, thanks uh, for letting me speak briefly about that. Awesome. Thanks for sharing. Thank you for, thank mm -hmm. you for raising the issue. issue. So next item on the list is uh, uh, okay. I'll share again the screen. Um, community let's talk community contributions. Um, so Badek wants to raise the discussion of getting rid of jQuery prototype Yahoo UI, prototype or Yahoo UI. Yeah, it just it was a topic we started discussing in our internal Slack with uh, Felix. So we got multiple um, security issues with this library because they are outdated. Most of them are not uh, something that is uh, exploitable in Jenkins, but we still get a lot of reports. Yeah, your application is vulnerable and things like that, even if it's not true. And the fact that we are using very, very old library seems to be weird, especially the Yahoo stuff, because it's uh, completely out of support. And the version we are using is not even the last version of the library or things like that. So it's just a reminder there, if you have some ideas about how to remove completely them during the CSS rework or during the next phase or during the next, next phase, it's just a very, very good thing. So share your ideas, share everything you can have with that. It could be just useful. Um, yeah, I want to, I will repeat now here what I said. Um, I want to be brief, what I said on the uh, UX Gitter. I think jQuery is removable. I think if we want to remove prototype, not just from Jenkins, from the whole ecosystem, it will take one, one and a half to two years and we add the deprecation notice we should give. <laughs> Because if we want to move it, it's used all over the place. It's so connected to everything, and it's really difficult to to remove. So that said, if if we are willing to just say we have two years until we remove this, it's maybe it's enough time for plugging the uh, authors to 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 consider it. Other uh, other than that, it's going to stay there forever. Yahoo UI does not concern me as much because Yahoo UI does not modify the JavaScript runtime, which prototype does. So, And just for the fun, we got a report recently from a customer about the Yahoo UI because of some inner HTML tag used inside that library. Burp, the software used for the different pen tests and things like that you can do on a web application, said it was a DOM XSS due to that. So it was confirmed that it was not a vulnerability, but it's still something that is outdated and potentially annoying for us. So for me, it's more a security concern. And if we can say in two years, we get rid of them, it's already a very good thing compared to the current situation. Yeah, I mean, but that's not my goal. So I mean, I just want to 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 make everyone aware of this of the severity of that. It's going to take one year to to remove more or more, and then count it another year for everybody every plugin to be up to date. Whatever. I think those are the stakes. jQuery can be removed safely. Yahoo UI and prototype not. Mm, I was just wondering, it could, it could be looked at on a component by component basis, at least in core, and, and reduce the reliance on it. Um, yeah, I mean, definitely. Yeah, I've had the misfortune of touching it recently, and it took me quite a while to get my head around it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, 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 I agree with you there. Yeah. Um, I would like to 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 go to move to the next item if possible. So, Badek, is do we want to discuss any this any further? No, no, it's just a highlight there. If you have some ideas, if you have just if you are creating a new script and you are not using prototype, it's already a good thing. So I'm just going vanilla JavaScript. Yeah. And no, no prototype, no no jQuery, anything else. Just vanilla JavaScript. So. And that's what I suggest. 
Okay, uh, next item is not high priority trash OSC issues. There are just two issues I detected with uh, on current Jenkins, maybe some of the introduced with the typographies and introduced with the buttons change. So basically here these buttons in this pop-up at least, clicking help us localize this page, they don't have the right styles. I'll be working on a fix for that for this next sprint. I don't know if this is a if this doesn't help the case for the buttons to be LTS. But I mean I have the fix located. Um and the other one is what, what plugin is that, Felix? I've never known how to get that link. It's uh, the translation <laughs> assistance plugin. And actually, yeah. uh, right now, we have some issues with this plugin uh, because um, it has uh, infrastructure uh, uh, which is supposed to receive uh, the localization suggestions. So the button I contribute my translations to the Jenkins project basically doesn't work right now. <laughs> but you can still uh, do it for local editing. I have long standing uh, action item in my backlog, well, even not in the backlog, in the future uh, to release new version which improves the situation. But regarding these buttons, I wouldn't be concerned uh, at all right now because uh, this entire functionality needs to be updated or removed yeah. if you want uh, to do that. No, I saw it only, I found another instance of this issue in only one plugin and I think it was here. Oh, no. Oh, no. I don't know. Or in the advanced, in one of these plugins, uh, multi yeah. plugin. <laughs> you have I obscure plugins. <laughs> Never seen any of these. Yeah, I, I did lots of, I did some rather deep dive into this. Um, but yeah, I think, yeah, moving ahead, um, boxes for alert on breakdowns interaction. I think that's a PR by Roman. I yeah, that, that was nice. just a quick note uh, that Daniel realized that there was an issue with this one. When the alert appeared and you were scrolling, you will not be able to click the breadcrumbs because the div actually was there, was visible and was displaying. So to Felix's point, I first was trying to change to display on when the alert was gone, but that wouldn't work with the animation. So I just did the visibility change to make it disappear. Now the breadcrumbs should be clickable again. So if you just click in the files change, it changed. It's a very easy fix. So that's, that's the area. I mean, I mean, it's getting, it's getting merged tomorrow anyway. So I don't right. think there's much to. Yeah. So that was it. Quick update on that. Okay, thank you, Roman. And uh, Ma Mark, uh, can you please comment on, on this item? Just a reminder to everyone, we're at a precious time when the next long-term support release is being selected. The hyperlink there takes you to the mailing list where that's being discussed. And Tim Jacom just barely shared his insights, Daniel as well. Don't be shy about sharing your, your insights so that the community is aware of what you're thinking in terms of evolution. So, yeah, I wanted to, to ask about this because I, I don't, who's supposed to answer to this thread? I mean, people with write permissions, with maintainers, uh, or everybody in the community is welcome to. Everybody is welcome to contribute. Right, okay. and anyone, and insights are valued here in terms of knowing where we are at in the evolution. I love Baptiste's observation, and I even more value Daniel's in terms of, hey, 2.235 looks very promising. It's okay in this process to choose a not yet delivered release because we've, we've changed the LTS process specifically to allow that. Well, uh, not specifically. So why mm -hmm. we discussed this version? Because LTS decision date is next week. So we have one week to make a decision and hence we can discuss uh, on the released version because it will be still released uh, by uh, the decision date. Yeah. Mm -hmm. for, for me, for me, it's great because it leaves us, um, I'd like to be the buttons to be featured. I mean, because I think the more UI changes, especially the buttons, they, they are a rather dramatic uh, change. So that's my vote other than that. And we, we still have time for all the fixes we want, because in two weeks is more than enough time, I believe. I don't want to jinx anything, so, but yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mark, for the clarification. I will, I will also comment. Okay. Yeah.
So we have uh, three days to stretch the definition of uh, merging something crazy, right? Yeah. Right. Please, please I, I don't mean, we, do we, the merge something <laughs> crazy thing, right? That would be, yeah. So no diffs, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, div diffs is not going to get merged. But Thank you, Tim. <laughs> Thank you. We appreciate Tim the sacrifice there. And unless you want to derail to burn the release. <laughs> okay. Uh, but yeah. yeah. And to end the to to end the the meeting, I would like to call attention to the to the PR of migrating forums from dips to, sorry from tables to dips. It's a big one. So and um, it's a really really big one. I'm really excited for that one. Uh, it's going to break stuff definitely. So uh, we want so we are looking to have it merge as soon as early in the LTS cycle as possible. So I welcome anybody to go ahead and, and I, try it out. I, I would phrase it as early in the next LTS cycle as possible, not the current LTS cycle. That, 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 would, be, that would be a burn the release, just the way Tim said it. Yes, but next LTL, LTS cycle is in one week. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, but yeah, I mean, uh, not, not next week, but we wanted to do it rather soon, as soon as it's reasonable. So, um, okay. So any testing that anyone here or elsewhere wants to do would be great. Um, myself, Felix, and Josh have all done, and Daniel have all done a fair bit of work on this, um, and it's gonna, it's moved on a lot in the last few weeks. Yeah, I'll try to yeah. focus on the smaller changes uh, to get them uh, into the weekly. Uh, mm -hmm. especially system rate and other things. Uh, yeah, I'm still in the end of quarter state, uh, but uh, yeah, I hope that I will be able to DK sometime tomorrow and on the weekend. Yeah, thank you. That would be great. That, that would be great. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, is uh, I think we are due. It's, it's been one hour. Uh, I think we should call it a day. Um, thank you, everybody. This was this Thanks has been a everyone. rather productive meeting. Um, and see you in two weeks. Much appreciated. Thank you. See you in two bye. weeks. Bye. 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 Who hit record on this one? Sorry, who was recording this one? Um, it's recording automatically. Oh, Jeremy, okay. will so, Jeremy will trim it. Perfect. All right. Thanks, everyone. Cheers. Bye.